You may have noticed that most of the videos in this series so far have been filmed on the most perfect of summer days. This year saw a seemingly endless heatwave take hold of the United Kingdom, from sunny Surrey right up to Loch Ness in northern Scotland. But whilst the blue skies made for great footage, for today's coin, M for Macintosh, we needed some rain. And summer ended and we got some rain, but by then I'd already booked the hotel. So off we went to Cardiff, the UK's rainiest city. In Cardiff, it rains for 151 days a year. Although it rains for 170 in Glasgow, Cardiff receives a greater volume of rainfall, making it the wetter of the two. And true to form, the sky clouded over as we crossed the bridge into Wales, and by the time we arrived in Cardiff, the heavens had opened with full force. But I was determined to do all the touristy stuff regardless of the weather. After all, what's a little rain when you have a Macintosh? And so we started our day at Cardiff Castle. It's this picturesque little castle built during the 11th century that sits atop a mound encircled by a moat. If you asked a kid to draw a castle, it would probably look something like this. And then the whole thing is enclosed by some altogether more imposing castle walls, complete with covered walkways and eerie medieval corridors that provided a welcome relief from the rain. By some small miracle, it even stopped raining for 15 minutes, giving us a chance to climb to the top. It's strange to think that this probably used to be the tallest point for miles around, but now the view is dominated by the gigantic Millennium Stadium. On the other side you could see the City Hall, and I spotted a stone circle in the adjacent park that I then forgot to go and check out again later. And then it started to rain again, but that's kind of the point of the video. We saw the Welsh National War Memorial, a grand circular colonnade built to commemorate those who lost their lives in the First World War, and then made our way into the small maze of shopping arcades that Cardiff is so well known for. These wonderful Victorian shopping centres are home to bookstores, independent shops, and a whole collection of overpriced tips to cafes. We explored Cardiff Market and saw the statue of Anurin Bevan, Welsh hero and founder of the NHS. And after some lunch and an hour back at the room to dry off, we made our way out of the city centre and down to Cardiff Bay. Thankfully the rain had ended for the day, but it had been replaced by bitter gale force winds, and it was still incredibly bleak. It was freezing and so windy that it was hard to stand still, so you'll have to forgive my poor attempt at holding up the coin. Even still, the Millennium Centre is easily one of my favourite buildings in the United Kingdom. Its front may look like it's made of copper, but is actually made from steel treated with copper oxide to help it better withstand Cardiff's weather. It reads, In these stones horizons sing, the title of a piece of music commissioned for the centre's grand opening in 2004. The Bay Area features a rather strange mismatch of sights. A seemingly out of place statue of Mahatma Gandhi, a rebuilt Norwegian wooden church, and the rather beautiful red brick pierhead building, one of the city's most iconic landmarks. And in the water stands the remains of some industrial revolution era coal staves, which everyone seems to photograph in moody black and white. And that's it really. Cardiff isn't a huge city, but what it lacks in size it certainly makes up for in charm. And rain, lots of rain. So if you plan on visiting Cardiff yourself, remember your Macintosh. <laughs>